and welcome to the Hash Define and Join podcast. I'm your host, Ronald Sousa. More importantly, welcome to the first episode. Now, first of all, before I get started, I feel like, I mean, I know I'm supposed to tell you what the podcast is going to be about and who I am and all that sort of stuff. I'm just going to wait a little longer before I tell you that. I feel like I need to tell you a disclaimer first. And that is, uh, first, I'm not really sure exactly what this podcast is going to be about. In fact, I feel that the format is going to be changing uh, as we kind of go through each episode. I mean, to be honest, it's 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 a, it's a given. If you've listened to a podcast for the first time, you, you tend to see that it, it sort of um, evolved to become what it is eventually. Um, and so I feel like I need to say sorry because uh, the reason why I'm not sure exactly what the format is going to be about is because I've decided to just press, you know, hit record and just get on and start talking because I have an idea roughly what I want to do with the podcast, but I kind of feel like the, the, the idea wasn't, uh, it was it, it was kind of half baked, and the reason being is because I'm constantly I was constantly thinking about what I want to talk about and do, and then it got to a point where I felt like I was wasting more time uh, worrying about what the podcast is going to be about than actually doing one and just getting on with it. And I know it's it's actually it, it pays to actually sit down and think about an idea and really do it properly. And and in all honesty, for the majority of stuff that I do on a day to day basis, that's what it is. I, I'm I'm really confident with I say really. I'm pretty confident with uh, electronics, and so when it comes to making decisions for that, I know what I need to do to try and think about and and assess the situation and make a plan for that. But when it comes to something that I've never done before, stuff that uh, is just random and different to you, uh, to, to what you normally do, then that's a different question altogether. And the annoying thing is, I felt, I, I, in all honesty, it's been at least a few years in the making this podcast. For quite a few years now, I'm, I was, I've been constantly thinking about doing one and th- thinking about the form I want to follow to the point where every idea kept, get, I kept, you know, I kept scrapping, I kept scrapping every idea and throwing it out and just got to a point where I, I was just feeling a bit sad for it because I know that I can do one and I can enjoy doing it and I know what the form I want to do, but I kept saying no. So the reason I'm actually recording this now is because uh, I know, I, I know roughly what I want to be talking to you about and and that is going to be about what I do and what I'm seeing, and hopefully marry this 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 podcast to uh, the YouTube videos that I've been releasing, and hopefully the products that I'm going to be developing for my company. So what I want to do with this podcast is essentially, uh, I guess it's just going to be a random electronic nerd coming to uh, you know recording himself talking about his day to day day to day life or stuff that he's dealing with. In fact, this is going to be uh, my uh, I guess you can say, this is going to be my my electronic logbook. This is my way of kind of uh, keeping log of everything that I've, I'm kind of dealing and stuff I've learned, so that maybe somebody else can learn from what I've what I've what I've been doing, and maybe you can avoid some of the mistakes or even uh, even just find some find something else that's interesting that you may not have realized. And so before I go any further. Um, and before I actually get started with, with, with explaining what this podcast is going to be, because I feel like I'm slowly edging that direction, I want to tell you that I mentioned the last thing, and that is, uh, I, I I ought to say sorry again because the the other reason why I didn't want to do this podcast, or what the other reason why I felt like I, I shouldn't do this podcast, is because I have the habit of going off topic. I have the habit of kind of losing my train of thought on a particular topic and realizing I need to talk about something else altogether, going off to that topic and forgetting the first one altogether, and Quite often, or more often than I like, uh, I end up be, I end up making uh, a complete uh, mess out of it. Uh, well, making it incoherent, really. I guess you can say. But that's the beautiful thing about this podcast, because I'm going to be having, I'm going to have. Uh, hopefully, there will be other listeners who find this podcast interested, who will be willing to give me that negative feedback that I need to both come up with the next, but uh, both kind of go back and talk about the the topic I missed out on the previous the previous podcast or previous episode or previous YouTube video, I guess if you're watching from there, um, and kind of um, uh, bring me back into track. And that was kind of the final reason. Well, that was kind of like the 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 last, well, I guess you can say that was the, the last thing I needed to kind of realize before I actually decided, okay, I can actually make this podcast and do it. And so this is where I'm at now. So what this podcast is going to be about uh, it's going to be about uh, electronics, but not in the sense of that I'm going to be talking about general electronics. I, I have no interest of, of being a teacher or teaching you fundamentals of electronics or or even 
trying to show you, or trying to kind of um, explain how you can push some electrons around, use some firmware. I have no interest in doing that because there are loads of really, really good resources out there, uh, both in podcast form and, be, and video, and be, um, YouTube videos for that matter. Uh, for example, you've got the Ampower and the Embedded FM and Spark Gap, uh, two of them, as far as I'm aware, they're also on YouTube. So there's loads of places you can go to, to listen to general topic of electronics, general um, theory of electronics. And if and the last one that I mentioned, which is Spark Gap, it's a great podcast to listen to if you want to uh, learn the stuff about programming, uh, electronics, mechanical stuff. That they, they do a really good job at doing that on their, on their podcast, all three. So I don't really want to replicate that. I don't really fancy being that person teaching you electronics, both because I don't feel like I have that, that state of mind. I, I'm one of those people that if you want to learn something from me, unless I'm in the middle of doing it or actually working on it or practically doing something, uh, I'm going to struggle to actually uh, plan something out on the spot to tell you because, to be honest, uh, that's, ha that's not how my mind works. I tend to be very focused on what I'm doing. I tend to be looking at something, figuring it out. And if you've ever seen, uh, if you ever tried to picture, or if you've ever been writing code, you kind of, you, you probably understand what I mean. You, you're writing code and you're coming up with, you're thinking of, you're keeping a, a record of all the different things that are happening in the code. And that's what my brain is doing at that moment in time. So if you want me to teach you uh, how, how to push an electron with a bit of code on some Arduino, then suddenly, and, and that's not what I'm doing at the moment in time, then you're, you're out of luck. You're probably going to struggle with getting good, a good, consistent, a coherent uh, explanation from me. Uh, from me. Uh, now, I'm saying that, um, saying that I probably should mention that I do actually do, uh, I do actually teach people stuff uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, and that's through Contact Electronics. I'm actually one of the instructors. But that is a, that's, that's a beautiful fit for the sort of stuff that I do because uh, that is an apprenticeship-style teaching you are actually learning as I'm developing something in front of you on a camera. And so I'm not having to kind of go out of my way and write down a, a, a lesson plan. I'm actually just developing a product with Eric and Chris Gamble, and then you're learning from what we're doing. You're, and then you're able to actually ask us questions what we've done, and then I'm able to give you the answers from that because that is what's on my mind has been on, and that's going to be developing. Um, so that's the disclaimer I kind of wanted to, to, to mention with that originally. And so with the podcast, it's going to be about, uh, as I mentioned, it's going to be electronics. It's going to be everything I find interesting. So the stuff I'm dealing with, my business, the occasional business issues that I've dealt with or uh, awesome stuff that I've dealt with. Maybe stuff that you might find interesting if you want to start becoming a contractor. You might occasionally want to voice certain stuff. Uh, I'm not planning to, um, to sit down as well to give you a detailed explanation as to what you need to, to run your own business. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to hit record and tell you what I've just seen that day that uh, you might find interesting or what product I've just finished developing, what issue I found that actually this is something that other people are going to have issues with. Maybe you can find that interesting. And maybe even talk about stuff that you may not necessarily be taught uh, in a educational uh, establishment like a university or college or whatever. Uh, I'll kind of explain something that, you know, as a practical engineer or somebody who's practicing design work, might, you might find interesting. It's kind of be like a very gray borderline between actually teaching you fundamentals and actually teaching you things that you will actually see day to day kind of thing. And quite often it'll just be basically me moaning about some programming language or something like that. But uh, well, we'll get on with that at some point anyway. Um, and the final question, uh, the final thing I want to cover, who am I? Uh, first of all, thank you for listening for eight whole minutes without actually asking who I am. I am Ronald Sosa, I'm an electronic nerd, and I graduated at university uh, with a master's in mechatronics and robotics, which is just a fancy name for knowing a little bit of electronics and knowing a little bit of mechanics and just sticking it all together. In all honesty though, even though I graduated at university with robotics and stuff like that, I can tell you now, I'm pretty certain all the stuff that I've learned, um, I, I, in fact, I tell you, the real learning started when I actually started working in a company. The university just got me the job. The actual learning, the actual learning that I that I gained from the better stuff that I do day to day is actually doing work and doing it. And in all honesty, though, if I had the chance to redo it, I they, I would have seriously thought about apprenticeship and uh, what was available at the time because, um, yeah, the company I was working, well, the first company I worked on, they had no, they didn't care that I that I came from a university. They 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 hired me because the guy that was working there was a friend of mine, and he told him that. I know exactly the sort of stuff that I that they'd be doing there because I I actively worked on my own electronics 
uh, while I was at university because the university wasn't going to teach me any real electronics. So I had to actually go and get a book myself and start programming and dealing with that sort of stuff. But then, yeah, he passed it on and said that he knows those stuff. He can actually do that kind of coding. And that's how I got that job eventually. Um, and I owe a lot to that guy who helped, who helped me out get that job in the first place. And because that happened, and that was the kicker, I, I, I ended up spending so much money at university and that happened, and the guy that hired me didn't care that I came from a university. I'm sure he kind of did, but anyway, that's the point, though. So with that in mind, um, so who am I? Uh, some of you may have seen me on my YouTube channel. I have a, I, I've, I've been actively putting videos on the Hash Panatronic uh, YouTube. I'll link it up on the post below, or well, I'll link it up on the content of this video, or the page. Um, I need to work on that. <laughs> so. I'll put it up on there. So you might see my videos on that. Um, I'm, I've been actively working with Ballport on one of his projects, uh, the Touchy Board. So I've actually developed the firmware for that, the basic firmware. And I've been doing videos on, in fact, the majority of my videos right now on Hatchet is, is for the uh, Ballport boards, uh, whether it's assembling or programming. But yeah, I've been doing things like um, uh, right, doing videos on how to program it by the bootloader and uh, assembling the board and hopefully when I release the next one um, uh, to actually write code on the board itself uh, for the board itself um, so the environment you're in and all that stuff so people who actually are getting the, the, the touchy board from ballpark can actually take that board and actually start doing that um, yeah if it, you may have seen that board in fact it's actually a really interesting little board that touchy board um, it's a I, I believe I mean I, I, I guess I'm biased here but I believe that's a much better example of a development board for that mic controller than the actual um, manufacturer, than the actual vendor of that micro. Uh, the micro that I used is the uh, EFM8 SB1, which is a 8051 or 8052. I think it's an 8051 uh, processor with a capacitance peripheral. Uh, it's just low power with capacitance built in, so you can actually just very simply implement a touch interface. I think that's a much better one than. Sorry, then the one that uh, the vendor released because it gets rid of all the crap. Like it's just, it literally is just a micro with the pads, uh, with all the pins expanded out, so you can just plug it into whatever you want. And more often than not, you've already have some hardware that you want to add touch capacities onto it. That's you know that's a perfect one, but uh, less Scilabs advertiser. That's just the way it is. But saying that though, it's a beautiful looking board as well. But uh, so with that aside, uh, what else? You may have seen me on the, as I mentioned earlier, you may have seen some of my Contextotronics videos. There was a one-to-one -one chat with me and Chris Gamble that he released on the Contextotronics um, uh, channel, which I'm sure I'll link it up anyway, uh, with me and him talking about my, choosing the right my controller and stuff. You may, if you're a Contextotronics member, you've probably seen all my videos on uh, writing code on the nuclear board and the tutorials I did on learning C and the data types and and all that stuff. Uh, you may, I'm just gonna put it out there, I've heard my Ampower interview with Chris Gamble. Uh, I, yeah, that awkward interview that I had where uh, I was overly excited the whole time and just kept going off and off in a tangent. You may have seen, you may have heard that, or seen it actually, because that's now on YouTube, but anyway. Uh, and finally, you may have just met me in real life. Um, yeah, I'm just a, um, yeah, if you're in Leeds, and you've been to the hack space, which to be honest, I've not been for a while now. Um, you may have seen me there, met me there. Uh, so yeah, cool, congrats. You've seen what I actually look like in real life. I guess that's a good thing. Um, so yeah, you may have seen that sort of stuff. Uh, what do I do? I mean, um, I am an electronic contractor. I, I actually, uh, I'm running my own company, which is what this podcast is about. Um, I do contract work. Now I wanna say, that the work that I do is all electronics, actually, it isn't. It's actually a split between, um, well, to be honest, I can't really tell you how, what the split is because it just keeps varying. Basically, I'm a jack of all trade. I, I do whatever it takes to keep the company surviving. So I'm doing stuff with content electronics, I'm doing stuff with Ballport, uh, I'm doing web development work for some clients, um, I'm doing some, uh, some firmware work for some other people in Australia. It's just, it's whatever work comes my way. And the beautiful thing is they all seem to just slowly flow work and there seem to be more than enough for me to actually be able to spend time doing this podcast, doing focusing on my YouTube video. Not enough time, however, for me to work full time on my company core projects. 
which is the robots, which I'm hoping to do more, which I'm hoping to kind of keep talking about at some point on the podcast and do videos on YouTube on that. I'll actually explain more about that in a minute, but because uh, it's actually quite interesting, actually. Um, and yeah, I'm just uh, electronic node kind of going through the motions of running a business. I think I've, that's an enough explanation of who I am. To be honest, though, that if you if you stick around for the next few episodes, you're probably going to get more of an insight of who I am and what I do. But what I want to talk to you about, I uh, actually not talk about. Um, I'm actually going to make this into a, an episode, into a proper episode, rather than just an introduction episode. Um, find naming things are hard, right? I that's actually one of the things that I find difficult. And I've spoken to a handful of people, and I say a handful of people, like a partner, my partner, and. And friends online, like a few people here and there. Uh, oh, I should mention, incidentally, uh, I, I am, I, well, I am, well, say I am, but you can find me on Twitter. If you're feeling social, you can find me on there. My username is Optical Worm. And there's also the uh, username for my company, hashtag Fine Elec. Um, those two tweets, if you are on Twitter, don't forget to subscribe to those because uh, you'll definitely be able to hear me talk about random stuff before I even start recording, really. Uh, so, naming things are hard. and Really, it's just Twitter. I mean, that's why I kind of went off into the topic there. But with Twitter, for example, I've been put, uh, putting the occasional message or complaining about naming stuff. And in all honesty, though, naming things are hard. And I find it interesting that not everybody has that issue. Now, often when I've done my videos on Cortex Electronics, I would just, as an example, I would just use the word Bob. I wouldn't actually write code that says Bob. But when I'm trying to explain something to somebody on the forum, I say, oh, blah, blah, Bob is a good this kind of thing. They're hard because... Yeah, you, you just get put under a lot of pressure to try and find the right name for that variable that explains the code that you have there. And in fact, even the name of my company was a difficult one, Hash Fun Electronics. Uh, it, it was one of those things where I just went with a whim on that. Uh, I, I, I was agonizing for ages that I wanted to start a business, I want to start my own contract work, I want to do my own projects. And out of all things, it was the names. And, and interesting enough though, I'm not the only one here. It's naming the company, coming up with a name that people tend to kind of be stuck to start with. Like, okay, I want to run my own business, but what am I going to call it? Oh, I can call it this. And then after a while, you kind of realize actually that actually makes no bloody difference, right? You can name it whatever you want. Just don't insult people when you do that. And when I was coming up with a name from a company, I just for ages, I was trying to figure something that actually explains what I do. And then everybody's advice, keep it short, keep it into a single word, Maybe mix a couple of words. I can tell you now, I don't give a sort about that. I, I name a company Hash Define Electronics because I was trying to be too clever for my own good. I was trying to name it on with something that I that I, I always find amusing. I find code C code and funny and Hash Define. I always find them kind of funny because you have Hash Define and then you got Twitters. And if you try to use Twitter or Hash and that, I just that just kind of played with my mind. And I figured, oh, what if I Define electronics. That's the clever thing. I've, I am. I'm defining electronics. Uh, yeah. Now I'm stuck with a long name. Ha the, my URL for my website is ha uh, hash define electronics because you can't use the hashtag uh, as part of the URL, and you can't use hashtags um, as part of the Twitter name because they're using that for tags. <laughs> and and so you pretty much just see hash as in the word hash. And yeah, hash fun and trying. So it's one of those things where just naming is hard. Don't even think about trying to name a child. Like that, that, that took forever. And even, and even then, I had help from my partner. Uh, we both really thought about it and came up with, with a name, what it is, because I wanted her, uh, my baby's name to mean something uh, more than just uh, random. I didn't just want to call my child something random that I, I have no relations to, really. So, oh, well, obviously, you have to give him your surname. I guess that's enough of a relation, I guess. But anyway going off topic there again. Um, so naming things are hard. And the reason why I want to say this is because when it comes to programming, that it, that in itself, you're, you're always in a constant position of having to name variables. You're always in a position, because that's coding for you, that's just a, a fact. You're going to create a variable, and if you want that variable to be successful in explaining your code, you need to come up with a name that best fit. But then you get lazy quite, quite often. And, and you see it, like if you've ever done code inspection on other people's work, you know, um, the, you know, the code that you find online, you often kind of tend to see, I guess you could say the profile of the person, not the profile, their their genetic makeup, I guess you could say, of their code. The stuff that you kind of see, oh, that that is that person who wrote that code. For example, 
I have a colleague, uh, say colleague, I have a friend who just loves to use the word wipe on everything. And it just pissed me off because uh, I mean, I, I'm sure he's, he's going to hear this anyway, but it just used the word wipe. And, and, and in all fairness, the word wipe in the, for what he was using for uh, made sense, except that he he didn't he, he was afraid, I guess you can say, to use the word erase occasionally. He just used the word wipe. And it's just one of those things that that word clearly explains that it was you, or clearly uh, emphasizes that you wrote the code, or at least somebody's stuck writing developing code that you've written with that structure. And here, I'll tell you what, here's a situation where sticking to the same name for everything is a good thing and it's a bad thing. So I have the habit of when I'm um, looping through, uh, if I'm writing a for loop and I'm looping, I'm going through that loop, and you need some sort of counter or some sort of uh, variable sometimes um, to keep track of that loop, I often tend to use things like index. A friend of mine would use X, I, or, you know, single letters, and that always pisses me off because that, that is just, yeah, you're just using single letters. You're not even trying to give them names. Um, but I like to actually write full words, and I wrote the word uh, index, and I often use it if there is no real context that I can just follow out, and it's just I'm indexing through and or counting through, if you want to use count. Uh, but more often than not, if there's an actual context that could be ex improved with the actual name of changing it from index to something else, like for example, I have a LED buffer, then I might just do LED index, potentially because it kind of tells people that I'm using that to, be, to index through that array and it's an LED array and that makes sense. Uh, but where it bit me, right, uh, is when I started working on JavaScript. Now, in C, you can write uh, variables in, you can create local variables within a function. Uh, and that was great because that's what I used to do. I used to use indexes within that function, never made indexes uh, global, just my mind, that's how my mind worked. Um, and if it did, then the, um, then the compiler will complain about it. Oh, you've got two redefines. And you always have to redefine it, wouldn't you? You always have to do unsigned or uindate or whatever it is that you want to do. And that's fine. But when I went to uh, JavaScript being new to the whole thing, I kept, I, I kept some of my, my habits of writing C going into JavaScript, which I should point out, JavaScript is not C. Don't migrate all your bad habits from one to the other because they bite you. And in this case, this bit me. So I was starting to write um, JavaScript and I started naming my variables index. And then I got to this bug, right, where I have this function and it's looping through. And when it gets to a certain number, it's supposed to check if it gets to a certain number to, cut, to get out or, I mean, in this case, the easiest one to explain is like, I have a for loop and then when, he, when the index goes to 100, it gets out. So it needs to go 100 times. And then within that loop, I'm calling another function. And within that function, I'm setting some parameters and stuff like that. And what I found is that uh, it was always looping. It was a forever loop. And, you know, you step into it because you can use uh, debuggers and stuff like that for this. I stepped into it and I can see that the index was set to zero. It went through the function uh, and it was then set to... Um, 30 I think it was or something it wasn't it wasn't 100 basically if it had been anything greater than 100 then I probably wouldn't have found the problem it would have been a worse problem I guess and it was it, the index was being set to, to 30 and you if you're listening to this now and you're, you're experienced with JavaScript you probably already know exactly what just happened there uh, but I'll explain uh, it's been set to 30 and then the loop will go back to the top it will become 31 it goes into that function and then it comes back out and it's back to 30 and it gets and it goes around, gets set to thirty one, and it was just an infinite loop. And it's like, what the hell just happened here? I don't. What's going on here? And after a little while, after searching online, and figuring out, I made a mistake, and that is that I forgot to put var, uh, var in front of the uh, variable index. Because in JavaScript, if you aren't using exclip, ex exclip, um that's even worse. If you're not in strict mode when developing JavaScript, uh, you you can actually use functions that are globally and there is just basically if it just used in the global the, the global variable name directly within the functions it will just use it so if you and what's worse is if, if there is no global variables with the name of that variable you just created your javascript will happily create it and so what was happening is that i was using index in a lot of different functions without this via this without this uh var uh, word in front of it uh, um, or the definer uh, in front of the variable name. And so what's happening is that if that's the first time that index variables uh, was called, it was the first time that it 
your JavaScript uh, JavaScript code sees it, then it creates it, and it keeps it there. And if you call another function that has the same index uh, name that you're using, the same case sensitive and all that, then it'll use that variable and it'll continue from there on. If you're not resetting your variables, which quite often, uh, uh, which you know, quite often I did with all my variables that I was creating, I always set a default value, uh, well, depending on the case, but in most cases I did, then I didn't have this issue. But then suddenly I'm calling this function within a function, and then I have this index which started at zero, goes into this for loop, uh, I created as uh, without the key, the keyword uh, var in front of it, and so it became global, because JavaScript, that's what it does. If you create a variable within the function without the word var, then you know, it thinks that you're trying to create a global variable. Thank you very much. And then you call this other function, and uh, which has you've done the same mistake in there as well. And then it starts altering the original, the original or the first one that was created. And when you get out of that function, you now set, you now have index on the new value, and it was just a forever loop. And it took a while. And now, like I automatically write the word var in front of every variable. But that was the pain. That is one of the issues where if you get used to using the same names for things, and you and you expect that to work in one language and then go to another, then forget your bad habits, try and get rid of them before you go to a new language, or at least get ready to learn the hard way uh, what happens when you don't actually read all the full spec of a programming language like JavaScript, which in itself is full of holes, like Swiss cheese, I guess you can say. But uh, saying that, I do enjoy programming in JavaScript. I know it, I'm a better engineer and I, I actually enjoy writing in JavaScript. Saying that though, I have actually not written uh, any JavaScript on a embedded device has always been on computers, but eh, anyway, everybody has different taste on things. I mean, I'm sure some people are there. Um, I'm sure you enjoy Python. Some of you might enjoy Python and other Ada or uh, uh, Lua or whatever other languages out there. They're, they're, eh, anyway, everybody has their own pre personal preference, but um, yeah, so that was interesting. So naming variables are hard, right? And I just kind of feel like if you do it right, then your code makes sense. If you do it right and you do it somewhere else, then you end up paying for it. So there's no real winning, to be honest. Like there's just you're just never gonna win on that sort of stuff anyway. But yeah, who's gonna know? Um, before I leave, I want to talk about my uh, robot project. I just thought some people might find that interesting. So when I started this company, I, I can't remember back 27 minutes or so how much I've talked about this. But when I started this company, the intention was for me to develop my own electronics. And what you quite often find that if you are a contractor, if your company primary work is contract work, then your own personal projects is pretty much going to be dead in the water until you until you really work your ass off to try and find the right amount of time to do it. You know what I mean? The issue is that I started my company, then I decided to have a child, and then uh, I've taken all this new contract work in the you know in the last year or so, and then just trying to find the time to work on my robot, and it's just been. A constant battle trying to find time, and then I've also decided to start a podcast and also develop the uh, develop or do more videos on YouTube. But in all honesty, though, all of this does marry up anyway. So I think I think I did mention that earlier. But so the robot is meant to be a. Uh, I think I might have mentioned this, but uh, the robot is meant to be um, a, a starting point for. Uh, well, to be honest, it's meant to be a starting for for developing uh, image processing based robots. Uh, I know that sounds like a really gimmicky name, but the thing is that when I was at university, I was very happy at doing image processing. That was kind of like one of my passion when I was there, when I was first introduced to it. Uh, I was developing robots, I was playing with that. This is the times before Open OpenCV and all that stuff, and it was great. And the problem is that when as soon as I left and I started working in the automotive industry or in the fuel industry, um, I ended up kind of giving up a lot of my free time. Well, and g g I ended up giving up a lot of the time I used to spend on my own projects to work on that sort of stuff. And then you end up kind of, if, you, if it's your first um, big project, a big company you're working on, or you, your first company you're working on, you tend to kind of be tired when you get home, unless you're, unless you're one of those uh, miracle people who can just keep on soldiering on. So I ended up kind of giving up on that. So the idea behind this robot, really, is just to try and get me back into the flow of things. And, but the thing is, though, I don't want to go into developing open, open, open CV. Uh, it is open CV, yeah, it is. I don't want to get back. I don't want to start working on something that's already been fully developed and making it easy for you to develop image processing because, in all honesty, I'm not looking to uh, discover and play around with uh, image processing techniques. I am looking to, uh, to get back into the swing of things. I'm even uh, 
have a very basic system and kind of seeing how the constraints on that will help, help me solve some of the problems. And so really what I want to end up getting to at some point with this is, um, what I want to kind of get, get on with this is, um, it's have a little platform where it's not running an, uh, a, a Linux based system or, 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 or a processor. It's just running a very basic embedded device with a very basic or, or a cheap uh, camera module and just kind of see how much I can get from that and play with some of the concept because A, when you are working on the bare metal, you're having to deal with every bit that you're dealing with or you have to deal with every single bit of the camera that's coming through, both the image, the memory constraint, the um, uh, even the speed that the, that the image is being processed. And ideally, if I can start with something fundamentally basic as that, then I can slowly build up to a much larger, grander scale, which ultimately I want to have a, a full stereo vision, uh, well, a robot that is capable of seeing between well, from two cameras, being able to detect objects, uh, recognizing objects, and possibly get to a point where um, there's enough people helping with develop it that we can actually start making useful robots, and not just robots that are, um, that are just avoiding objects and just hovering around the house, robots that are actually making a difference to both entertain, to uh, actually try and do some more slightly higher advanced tasks around the house, and even just a platform that just allows people to get started uh, and allow them to choose which difficulty they want to go to or which how simple they want to develop that. So that was the idea behind that robot. Um, I have done a 3D print video or a time lapse video on my YouTube channel. Uh, sorry, I've uploaded, I posted one showing you the chassis being printed. Uh, that's actually the um, the robot that I'm on about that I kind of want to work on. I will link up the project page uh, onto this video and to this at the end of this podcast anyway. Um, and hopefully, if uh, if you do find that interesting, you're actually also willing to kind of work me work with me on that. Then that's great because then I'll, I get a community who's helping me put that together. And and really, the idea behind this whole thing is to try and keep things small, simple, and easy that anyone can just get on and get started with image processing and slowly work their way up through the different type of robots that we've put together to the point where they can choose, okay, so I mean, ideally, I want to have like three versions uh, depending on the sort of how complex the tasks are going to be. So the first one is going to be kind of like very fundamental image processing that I can play around with some concept. Uh, I've got a few, I've, I've got a few concepts in mind that I want to play with. Uh, and then the other two will be something like you just replace this boy with this other one. Now you've got more power, more processing. Now you possibly have an operating system uh, such as uh, free RTOS that you can play with to try and do this stuff. And then maybe the third one will be an actual full-fledged Linux computer with possibly real-time interrupts with uh, to try and do some more robotics like like the blue be uh, beagle. I forget what the one is, something like similar to that. Um, but to start with something small and simple, and maybe even experiment with the locomotive methods for getting the robot from A to B. Because at the moment, uh, the robot's been developed. Uh, well, the way I put the robot together is I'm using small uh, planetarium motors. It's basically like it's bigger than a pager motor, uh, big enough that uh, it, you can fit a, a small scale planetarium gears on that. They're actually used for uh, driving telecommunication uh, filters, um, but they're just like second hand. They've been disordered off the, the units and been sold, have been put out. Um, sold through Al uh, AliExpress and stuff. Because I mean, you can tell, cause once you buy it, you can see that it's been worn out. It needs to be stripped apart and re-oiled and cleaned up and all that stuff. Uh, which is kind of the first thing I ended up having to do when I got those motors through and test them to see if they're all working. And yeah, they're all kind of... I haven't used them for a few months now, but they, they sounded pretty clear to me uh, when I first when I put them all together. But yeah, I used two of those motors uh, in, with a track system, uh, driving a small... Uh, driving a rubber band um, the idea behind it really, the reason why I chose those motors is because I, I was looking for, I was looking for a very slow motor. I wasn't looking for uh, a motor that I need to step down both through gearing or with my own gears and my own and, and through PWM. I wanted something that was already at a speed that I was comfortable with. And then if I do any reduction it would be with very minor PWM just so that I can get the, 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 the control that I want. Um, really, I wanted something that goes from uh, from across an A4 sheet, you know, lengthwise across uh, within you know ten seconds, of, you know, uh, thereabout, as opposed to something that just goes there within a second because it's going to be too quickly. So ten seconds, I feel like that's it's still quite slow. Ten seconds, maybe five seconds. I, I forget uh, the test that I did on that, um, but just slow enough that once 
you know, it's just slow enough that I can actually get it to stop and do stuff. Because the, the, the thing is, though, the thing that's going to slow down this robot that I'm putting together is going to be the speed that I'm processing the images. And if the robot is moving at an insane speed, uh, then I, I'm going to have to upgrade the hardware so that there's a lot more power for the image processing to deal with that. And that's kind of beats the point of this robot. The whole point is that it's nice and slow and we can put some small targets. And that's the nice thing about being a small robot or being, keeping it small, that we can have small targets around a table that is more manageable for people with restricted space like I do, uh, like I used to have in my old flat, actually. Um, well, actually, that's when I, the robot first got conceived was because of that restriction, but anyway. Um, and so it's it's an area that you're going to play with and hopefully put Wi-Fi in there. I mean, I do I do have some ESP um, Wi-Fi modules that I bought specifically for this, but I'm not sure whether they will be the end or they'll be the final thing I use. And the other thing is keeping the cost low because it's meant to be a cheap development kit that anybody can pick up. Ideally, kind of maybe a kid who's just started getting into electronics and maybe wants to do a bit more robotics. Because, um, I mean, I'm hoping that um, within this robot there will be at least two microcontrollers. One of them will be focusing on doing the image processing and the other one will be the actual controlling and doing and maybe the main program logic of telling, okay, I found this object, what do I do? Okay, avoid that. I found this object, go, go to it because that's, your, your, that's what's going to charge you up kind of thing. But anyway, enough with that. Um, if you are interested on that project, uh, do go over to my YouTube channel, subscribe to my Hedgefontronix video. I am planning to be released, I'm planning to release a video in the next week or so, uh, going through and introducing the robot that I already put together. And then from there on, I'm just gonna start the development process. I'm gonna have to redesign the chassis anyway, because uh, I was originally was created using SolidWorks, which was fine at the time, but there is now better tools, both commercially for small companies like me, uh, and for and that are also free for anybody who isn't going for commercial use um, that can get access to those files. So I want to redesign it using uh, I forget I forget if it's one two three D designs or something like that. I want to re redesign it using a free tool um, that isn't something that's going to take forever to actually read um, to figure out if, you, if you're new to electronics and hardware altogether. Like for example, OpenSCAD is great if you if you're willing to put the extra work to figure out how it all works and get it to, to get it going. But ideally. To get new people into it uh, who's not down mechanical or electronics, then it needs to be something very interactive. So I need to redesign that. Uh, I need to actually start designing the PCB because I've done the, the initial design for it, uh, but that was used in Altium, but that I no longer have a license for that and I don't really fancy paying for a license, renew the license for that. I'm just gonna, it was uh, at the time I designed it using, not Altium, uh, Circus Studio, I think it was, uh, yeah because the other one is Circuit Maker. Circuit Studio, I think it is called. I had a 30-day trial and I managed just to design the PCB and I was just trying it out to see if it was gonna be a good tool to use uh, for my CAD. And then I started using um, um, KiCad and now I'm just a KiCad converted really. So in, in all honesty though, like, I'm biased it because it's a free tool that does everything that I need and it's constantly been improved and added features to. Why wouldn't I wanna use something like that? where if there's an issue, I can contact the the, uh, the group, find out what the problem is. Maybe there's other people having the same problem who are openly active telling people, you know, open about what the problem is. And and to be honest, I've done, I've dabbed with the, with the code base. I've, I've added, I've contributed to the, towards the code uh, selfishly because I, I needed um, a better way to do um, bombs on it. But um, so I've contributed. And so I, I, I have the confidence to make changes today if I wanted to. So it's one of those attractive things that I, I, I kind of enjoy it anyway. Um, yeah, so yeah, if you've, if you've not already gone to my YouTube channel, it's pretty bare right now, but do subscribe if you're interested in this project. Uh, that is likely gonna be the case uh, for this podcast. I'm gonna be talking about that, possibly more business related stuff and just general topic. And if I do get my hands on somebody who's willing to join me on the podcast to, um, for a session, then hopefully I'll, well, to be honest, I'll give you the heads up before that happens anyway, but. Um, but that should be fine then. So enough for an intro. If you have found this interesting, do feel free to uh, subscribe. I'm going to be adding this to uh, YouTube, which you probably, if you listen to this, chances are you probably are listening through that. Uh, so if you are already on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to this uh, podcast. If you are listening through my website, 
um, RSS, there, I have an RSS feed for it, go ahead and add that. Or if you listen to iTunes, subscribe to that. I am planning to release at least a podcast per week. You may occasionally get a, a baby crying in the background. Um, can't help it. It's what life has dealt. And to be honest, it's a natural and a good thing to have around because it keeps you awake at the right time of the day. So that said, uh, if you're finding all this interesting, don't don't be afraid. Uh, go over to, uh, go over to Twitter, subscribe, give me some feedback because that's only going to make me feel comfortable knowing that uh, there are other people actually listening to this, and selfishly allows me to see people who are actually like-minded, which I'm always happy to talk to. And that, um, if you're on the website RSS feed, if you're um, on YouTube, there's a subscription on that, uh, and that is it. Uh, so that's it for me. If you have any questions, well, the quest, uh, the, the best place is to really, even though this is going to be on YouTube uh, as well, uh, the best place to leave me comments is going to be on the website because on YouTube, I as much as I want to keep spending my time dealing with comments, which at the moment there's none because it's a relatively new website, a relatively new channel, uh, I primarily just tend to just focus most on, most on the website because I kind of feel like that marries up with the actual contents because I'm able to actually give you a more detailed description of what's happening on that podcast and that. So, well, I should be, hopefully, because I've not done this yet. Eh, we'll see anyway. Again, do feel free to give me some feedback on this because I'm still new to all this. I'm not even sure if the audio quality is that good in, in the first place. But, eh, we'll see how it goes. Again, if you listen this far, thank you for listening. Uh, that is it for me. See you later. Bye. Bye.